Hey everyone, it's Diane here and welcome to another Deco Easy video of me and my mother-in-law Jenny. Thank you so much for stopping by on our channel. We can't wait to get started crafting with you. Are you ready? Let's go! So for this DIY we need of course our tumbler tile blocks. I have a little box with some wooden uh, numbers. I have some wood glue, some paint at your choice or some furniture wax, your glue gum and of course a brush and a scissor. These are the main pieces we need for this DIY and what we're going to make for this DIY is we are going to make a decorative uh, clock. So we will see how this and with a little bit of a farmhouse touch so we will see how this turns out and of course I hope you take out your tumbler towel blocks too. We are going to start with the back side of the clock and we need first our eight blocks and this way. It's very easy. We just take our glue, wood glue. We just do a line on the side and like this. And we do it with seven of our blocks. And this is number two, and number three, and number four, and number five, number six, and number seven. And what we're going to do. We are going to row them together very easily this way and again over here we're going to do this one over here and the last we close up with this one and we're going to squeeze it a little just give a little pressure we are going to make a nice straight line like this and again give it some pressure and make a straight line again like this and you see already it's very easy to work with it because you can still readjust it this is already one and i'm going to make again eight blocks you see two four six seven and eight and i'm only going to do the back side in this uh face because or else you will be very bored with me so i'm going to do number three and of course i'm going to place them very easily together four and number five and number six again and number seven so we're going to row them together this way again like we did with the first row and squeeze it and press it in and we are going to oh, make a straight line like this and now we're going to make the row number three so in the last row of eight blocks four five six seven and eight we are going to do and then we're going to close both of them up and we whoop this is already one and two and you also can do it with your glue gun you don't have to use wood glue but if you want to keep it for a long time then I recommend just do it some wood glue or E6000 or just what you have laying around. I already roll them a little together so I have a little bit more space. And I see already I have one too many. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see? I already have enough. And make a straight line, squeeze it again, and you see the glue is coming out, and that doesn't matter. The only thing that we uh, must do before we're going to do it, because I think I'm going to wax this, the outside of the clock at least, in the brown rusty color. Then I have to sand it, because these uh, pieces of glue uh, give some stain on the block. It's really sucking in, and it gives a an, an strange, uh, uh, yeah... It, it even looks more like if it is, here in the Netherlands we say verbleken, but it bites out. I don't know how I could explain it better, but... And again, make a nice straight line. And this is number three. So in the moment I let it uh, uh, pull in for a little uh, half hour. And then we're going to glue everything together. So I did let the glue dry in for at least a uh, half an hour. I'm going to place it on the side and I'm going to do some glue on the middle, middle of the line 
and I'm going to do for this one the same. And of course, he's not totally dried because wood glue takes a little longer of your time to dry. But your projects will stay better in place. So I'm going to do this one and I'm going to row them again together. And this one over here. And then we make a nice straight line this way. And we're going to squeeze it, press it down, and we let this dry in for one and a half hour. And now I'm going to make a second one of three rows of eight. So we made our two pieces of our clock and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one piece, lay it down and I'm going to get my blocks. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do some glue in the middle and I'm going to build it on top of here. This is one and we're going to do a little in the middle and we're going to place it over here. We're going to do again in the middle. And we're going to place it over here. We get another one. And we're going to place it over here. And so we go further around. This one looks a little bit more thin than the other block. So we will see how this is looking like. And this is one. And we're going to do three on this side. Again, the same like we did on the other side. And in a moment, don't worry, in a moment we're going to straighten them out. Because when you are using your wood glue, you still have time to correct, correct your pieces. And again, this one. And make a nice straight line. And we're going to need two inside of here. And this is a number one. And the last one of course is over here and we're going to place it in between and now we are going to work our way around the, and you have the line of course from your uh, plank uh, under it so you can very easily shape everything and just make a nice line around your piece like this and then you're going to let it dry in for a half an hour Sometimes do a little bit pressure on the block and just make sure that it sticks in place over here. And now we are going to let this dry in for a half hour and then we're going to do the next layer. So and for the next row we are going to make ourselves a little easier. We are just going to make a line over here and in the middle of here and around this side and this I hope at least it will work <laughs> easier we will see how this will turn out and we're getting our blocks and we're going to do the same like we did with the other one just lay it down squeeze a little do the second one lay it down squeeze a little lay it down and again squeeze a little on top of here and we're going to do for the around the corner squeeze it lay it down another one and squeeze and lay it down and don't worry if you have one block which is a little bit smaller or bigger because everyone has the same problem so also over here we have blocks in the same package which are bigger and smaller so you don't understand how it's possible you have a one measurement and but every time we have different sizes, so don't worry, everyone has the same. And we're going to do it for this one and squeeze. And now the last we're going to get carefully inside and also squeeze and press it down. 
and we let this dry in also and then I'm going for two layers but you can uh, of course do your clock a little bit bigger then you can do three layers but I think I will go for two layers you see over here this is how it's looking like before we're going to put the top on here so but you can do it a, a little thicker i show that to you in a moment so i was looking for two layers like this or maybe three i will show you three if you like more three i think i am uh, just going over and i think i'm also going for the three because he will be a little bit thicker and a little bit more like a real clock so i'm going to make again the same line like we did in a moment you see again the same square we are going to do for the last layer and like this and now we're going to build it very easily again the same like we did the two other rows i know it's sometimes a little bit boring when i tell you things but I want for people who enjoy seeing how I make it, I do it step by step, but I understand completely is sometimes if you're not that kind of person, that this is not always your thing. So, but feel free, skip forward if you don't like it. But for everyone who enjoys to see how we make our DIYs, you see already then you can do it step by step together with us and we are just like everyone else also amateurs who just make an, a DIYs and we always hope you enjoy what you see and now the last two and again every time try to squeeze it and the last one of course we have to get it in a little yep, this way we have to press it down on the same row like this and you see now we have three rows before it and now he looks a little bit more like the thickness of a real clock so we did let dry in this piece also for a half an hour and we are going to take again our glue we are going to make another line in the middle over here and we are going to go this line and the middle over here and that's already what we need to do we are going to take the other top we made and we are going to lay it over all of them and we make sure that we have it in a straight line and we are going to give it a little pressure and we are going to let this dry and you see this is how the base of our clock turned out and we're going to place it this way it will be like we call here in the Netherlands a pendule so what we're going to do i'm going to lay it down i'm going to do the front i take my white chalk paint and i'm going to paint the middle piece in the white color of course not totally to the end because there will be some blocks again and i'm not going to do it very thick whitening but if you like a uh, totally in the white color it's fine too i always love that the wood is coming through a little bit so i'm going to do this but a little music you see i distressed a little bit of the middle piece but of course I did it white, you can do it uh, in any color you like, this is a fitting for your decor. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get my wood glue again and I'm going to make a line the same like we did with the other one, just over here and this way and we're going to make a line this way and around here and around here. And this way of course we have to be sure that we have enough glue and now we're going to build one row again the same like we did earlier and again place it on top of here make sure that you have a straight line squeeze it down a little not too much but just a little we're going to go over the corner around the corner is that's better word <laughs> then over the corner 
and like this and this is already and I have to go a little bit outside because I put a little bit too much inside and this way I'm going to take the other one place it down and have a nice straight line and I have to squeeze it down and the next one and the number three on this row already and we have the two blocks to go and this is already the almost last one and we are going to squeeze this one inside make a straight line and we're going to squeeze it and we're going to straighten it out and like this and we are going to let this dry also so I also let this dry in for a half an hour. I have to place a little bit straight because you did go, <laughs> go away <laughs> a little. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some block. We're going to make a nice little line in between. I'm going to do on the block, I'm going to do on this side, just a little glue over here. And I'm going to place it in this corner, but straight up this way. I'm going to do here the same on this ending a little glue and we're going to place it in here and just make sure that you glue it against the line and like this and just keep it in place for a little moment and so we go around the corner a little over here and we're going to place it again over here and we are going to go again on the ending of the wider side of the block and again place it over here in a straight line we're going to go for the corner around the corner and we are going to build it and let it come in and this way and you see now we get a nice decorative uh, line around it but of course this is optional you don't have to do it if you don't like that maybe you they say this what is that for crazy <laughs> crazy line around it so go ahead do whatever you think is right you don't have to do it and this is already thick and almost two to go and the last line And I'm going to place it over here and again in a straight line and the last one and if all is right then it's uh, it's almost fitting it's not totally because some blocks are a little bit longer and smaller but we do our best like this and of course you see already one is a little smaller than the other you see we have a little open gap so i have to look for what i can do without with with this one but first i'm going to let this dry so our clock is drying over here so i'm going to lay it a little away i'm going to get four blocks and i'm going to make the legs and because i always love to make everything as much as i can from tom metal blocks i'm going to do one line over here and one line over here and i'm going to lay one block on here and the other one also on here a straight line squeeze it and we go to straight line and squeeze it and place it this way this is one we're going to lay it on the side squeeze it and this is one we are going to make the top at least it gives a nice handle on top of our um clock so i'm going to glue two of my little half blocks and this is not really a half this is one third of a block so i use two pieces of one th third of a block and i'm going to place it against one full block and this way just squeeze them together and make sure that you have a straight line and let this dry also so I wanted to show you also a little bit closer. So the legs are very easy. Just two blocks on top of each other. And we are going to paint them in the black color. 
and this is the top for our uh, clock and this is also one block like I said and uh, one third pieces but you also can do in half just uh, as big as you want to have it so then you see it also a little bit closer it's sometimes better than I explain it and I took one googly eyes a little bit of this size is um yeah if you see it's a little bit thicker than my thumb of course my thumb is a, a little bit thicker <laughs> thicker so i don't know if this is a comparison thing or not but at least he has to has this size and i'm going to glue of i'll paint all these pieces in the black color and i use my school board paint so very easy just Oh, I'm already having some plastic on top of my and I love the matte finish of my school board paint so that's why I use school board paint but if you want this uh, maybe spray painted in silver or in gold it's also looking very nice so you can do that also Our black pieces are drying and of course the middle piece, our googly eye is also dried up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my wooden letters, of letters, my wooden numbers, I'm so sorry. And I'm going to make, of course, with a one a, uh, and a two, I'm going to make my 12, I'm going to make a three and a six and a nine. So very easy, I'm going to glue them inside of here. And I'm going to do here the three, six, and um, nine. And then I'm going to make my um, uh, hands of my clock. But you will see that in a moment. First, I'm going to glue the numbers inside. And I'm going to try to do it with some wood glue. Because I, then I can still remove it. And with your glue gun, it dries up so fast that you can't still uh, readjust it anymore. So I'm going to do this the first time. I'm just going to try to do some uh, wood glue. I don't know if this will work or not maybe this is one disaster we'll see and i'm going to lay it down and i'm going to do the two and i'm not going to do on the whole piece just on little pieces and i'm going to place the two over here and then i hope i still can readjust it a little bit and th that's the harder thing with uh, the glue from your glue gun you can't resist, re do it anymore. So I'm going to make the, the numbers and then we're going to do the hands. Now I'm going to make the hands of the clock and I'm going to take because I think I have a little space in between so and not a lot of space. I'm going to take once uh, the number one and I'm going to, you see already this is, I hold them to my white uh, sweater so you can see that I did one on this side and I'm going to turn one over and to do on this side and now you see it still looks like an arrow so i'm going to do some glue i'm going to measure out lay them over here first i'm going to look for where i want to have them and i need another one of ones two sets and i'm going to place them also over here and i'm going to look where i want to have them because one needs to look longer than the other one so i think i'm going for this one this set over here and it doesn't have to fit totally because later we will pop it off with some uh, googly eye i have to look if maybe this is the right way i have to get it in the middle so work just a little bit and it has to be your own feeling where you think it needs to be here or it needs to be here so i'm going to just work a little bit and i'm going to glue them with wood glue And here you see how our clock turned out. 
of course you can do it totally in your own taste if you don't like this and you find it maybe the numbers a little too big or you want something else it doesn't matter just do whatever you think it's right this is just an inspiration what i'm going to do right now i'm going to glue my uh, stance under it and maybe i am still debating if i'm going to do two stripes here two stripes here two here and maybe two here i think i like that but i have to be sure that i um, really uh, like what I do because it's a pencil and you can never get it away so <laughs> I am going to first I'm going to glue my I'm turning this over and I'm going to glue my feet and you will see I'm doing one in the middle of this block and one in the middle of this block and then they stand out on each side a little piece and we are going to do that also with wood glue So the feet are almost dried up. What I go to do, I took a piece of uh, a lid of a bottle, of some plastic bottle, you know, you know where you have your water in. I just took the, the lid and I'm going to glue this in the middle over here. And then I'm going to place this one over here. I think it finishes off a little bit better than only this piece. So if you have a lid laying around, just use this one. So we glued it on top of here and now we let this dry also for at least an hour. So you see the top is glued on of course and I did the little stripes in between. I am not sure if I am satisfied, <laughs> satisfied with it. I have really no idea what to think of it. So um, maybe later you won't see them anymore but for now uh, I keep them this way and I, maybe it grows on me. I have really no, really no idea. The only thing what we still need to, to do is give it a rustic look. And I'm going to give it some furniture wax. And I'm going to use a very cheap brand furniture wax. But you can also maybe if you use some paint. You already probably painted before you glue the pieces on. Before you glue this one on. This one and of course his feet. But I'm going to use my furniture wax. And I'm going to give it a nice rustic look. So I'm going to take my time for it because I love the rustic look, but I will do this with some music. So I have them in the uh, furniture wax and I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel and I'm just going to wipe the wax we don't need away. And in a moment you will see a quick impression. And here you see a quick impression of our Tumblr Tower Blocks farmhouse clock. And I'm so happy how it turned out and it was so easy to make. And of course, if you joined me, you already have right now also your own farmhouse clock. And everyone who loved to watch, of course, I hope you had fun watching. But we're not ready yet. We are going further for our next DIY. And before we go further to our next DIY, I have to tell you that this video is also part of a beautiful get together which is called What Would You Make? This is hosted every month with the beautiful Zena from OK At Home DIY and the beautiful Connie from Connie Woodshop and DIYs. They asked us this month to join them as a guest host and Diane and I are so thrilled to join them. So of course I will place a link down below for the beautiful ladies that channels. So go check it out in our description box and there you find also the link for the playlist with tons and tons of beautiful wood decoration for you to find. Give the creators some love because they would love to see you over there so go check it out and for now we are going further to our next DIY. Today I have a new pack of these Jenga blocks. These are three euros from a shop called Action and it's similar to a Dollar Tree but then here in the Netherlands and we also are going to need this wood glue which also comes from the Action and uh, yeah I want to show you how the package looks inside for the ones who haven't seen it before. These are being sold as a game, but Jenny and, I, Jenny and I buy a bunch of them. Here they come like that, wrapped up in plastic. I think that's just to protect them while they're being shipped, because 
the plastic is pretty annoying. Now they have 60 pieces of these things in one bag. And there is one block. This one, you got to watch out for that. Because if you're using it, put it down like that. Because um, my experience is when you paint it, you're even going to see these letters. Um, but the rest is pretty good usable. So oh, I'm keeping this apart. Um, and then we can start crafting with this beautiful stuff. For this base, we're going to need a lot of those blocks. We need um, rows of three and then nine times because, as you can see, putting three up like that gives you the perfect square. So this is three long and this one is three long as well. So time to grab the glue. Um, I think first going to glue upside down. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Just try and shake it a little bit before you start. Just use the glue. What I'd like to do is just start gluing away and then putting these blocks to dry. Just like so. And then when the glue is dry, we're going to push them all together. dried for quite a little time. What I'm going to do now is just place all those blocks together like so. I think it's easier for me if I just turn over the board like this. Yeah. So just this way, press them hard together once the glue has dried a little bit more, now I'm laying them down loose. And when the whole row is finished, I'm going to give that a nice press. The last one contains no glue. Now pressing them, pressing them down. Hard with my fingers. And then we let it dry. Oh. Just like so. I'm repeating. The other steps with the uh, these rows as well then I'm letting it dry for quite a time um, because then we can start assembling the rest hey back again next day this thing has been glued I also glued these two or three parts together and now we have one solid wooden base. Um, let me see. Now I want to draw a circle and therefore I use uh, a plate. I have just an old plate. I'm going to put upside down like that. And uh, yeah, you can also use a vase or something like that. Maybe a flower pot if you have it. And a marker. Now let me see if this is center. I believe it is. Then we just start drawing a circle around. I'm still in doubt if this is the center or not. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, let's draw a circle. Like so. Nope. There we are. A circle. Next thing I want to do is grab some paint and uh, yeah, let's fill in the circle. This is the paint for today, the blackboard paint, also from the action. Use that brush and then we can start painting away. No, it doesn't have to be perfectly round. This is just a guideline. But if you want to, uh, you know, cover it up completely, then I suggest using another kind of brush, not this one. Or at least that doesn't work for me. However, 
do it like this, then it works better than I expected. Okay, yeah, this is a good idea. Just draw the circle alongside the lines here, and then you can extend it to the middle section, just like that. And then you can brush it in. Okay, I'm going to do that, and now let the paint dry, then we're ready for the next step. circle is dry. Now it's time to put some letters upon this DIY. Uh, I just took these wooden letters. They come in packages from the action. I also have them in white and in black and I thought this color would be nice for this style. Um, you can easily apply them with just using hot glue or any other kind of glue. They're easy to work with and uh, yeah now it's time to outline them which is always harder than I think. Might help to have a ruler or something. If you have that, I suggest using it. Now I'm just going to outline everything. And uh, my advice is to start in the center while you're gluing. So for example, I would start here with the C. Then for me, it's easier to, well, I'll just show you, to outline everything. So just apply a little bit of glue, it doesn't have to be super duper much glue. Apply the web. And then you just put it in the right place. Get rid of the spider webs afterwards, because they always come and go. And then you start with the L or with the O, just whatever you like. Apply some glue. And you can just place it in the center of the other two letters. Push a little bit. And there you go. And then you got to do the rest in the same way. Now the letters are there, but there are some spider webs. I'd like to brush them away if that works. Sometimes they're pretty stuck. And with the brush, they might get loose if they're not too thick. And you can easily just brush them up and then pick them up with your fingers. That works pretty well for these kind of spider webs. Sometimes they are too big, then I suggest using tweezers or maybe scissors to cut through them. And now you can also simply come underneath those glue webs and brush them away. Now, this looks much better. Time for the next step. Okay, the next step for me was using green to cover up the block so you only get the circle left. But I'm afraid that you're going to see the brown of the blocks too much, so that's why I have this green paint. It's just chalk paint also from Action. I have no idea how much I paid for it anyway. I'm going to do a shake first. And um, I'm going to pour that upon the brown parts. Don't forget to do these sides as well. Otherwise you might still see the wooden color peeking through. Look, now it's a much more camouflaged color that we've got there. I'm going to work around 
the edges but also on top. And then let that dry and then we can start putting the green on. Green paint is dry, time to add some more green. I have these, yeah, branches and also scissors because I think we have to cut them into smaller pieces here and there. These are pretty old. I have no idea how old they are. And the idea is to just like this, build up a wreath around the circle. Of course, we have to search for good pieces which we can use because they were really big branches before. And then I think it will be something like this, maybe a little bit more far from the outside and fill the inside part up with, uh, you know, I also have smaller parts, really small parts, which you can put here like this in between. For that, we also have the scissors because I see here, an ugly piece of plastic that I want to get rid of. That is not a good thing which we want to see. And when the glue gun oh, is ready, when the glue gun is ready, I wanted to say, then we can start building around with the green. That's the whole thing for the next step. I think we're almost there. Let's lift it up so you can see it better. Move the under part. Look, now you can see better what it became. I uh, still need to add something here in the corner. You still see some green here. Um, but what I'm trying to do is put two branches on these sides and one here. And then you're going around just so like you're forming a wreath. You know what I mean? Um, so just go in here and then stick the other one here underneath. That's a little bit what I was doing. Um, let's cut this one into a smaller piece. Because we can still use something here. Wonderful. Now put some glue on the branch. Doesn't have to be super much because this glue is pretty well for the weight of the branch. Don't let it go instantly. On hard, reasonable places, you can also let maybe a scissors help you. Now, if you're seeing parts that are still, you know, not covered up enough in green, I'll take the small parts and try to put them through. So I'm not gluing these. Just let the branches hold each other. And now it is covered up. One piece for this part, let's take this size, I think that will do, and then we can finish it off with a nice ribbon or something. Just use some glue, now tuck it underneath the other branches, like this, and thanks to the dark green paint you're not seeing the wood that much anymore. So we're cheating actually a little bit upon this kind of wreath. Let's take this one here underneath. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Now it's hard to pick it up. <laughs> Thanks to all the green. Let me remove the surface underneath for you. 
Now you can still see here, maybe this part, you can tuck it a little bit down there so it won't cover up the letters too much. Here, maybe do the same. Try if you can twist it around some other branches and tuck them in really well. It might help. Not always is helping, but this one might do. And let's see if we can fold this one underneath so it reaches back to that side. Now this looks much better. And as I said, we still need some decoration up here. I think that's going to be a nice cute bow for this wreath. And then you can put this upon your front door wreath, for example. Good. The last step is making a bow. And therefore I have this big roll of twine, burlap, sorry, burlap. And uh, I cut down a piece. I have no idea how long it is. I just cut off a small piece, two, and a bigger piece. What you do, if you have the long piece, you bring the corner around here, and then, oh, don't fold the double, around here, like some sort of loop. And uh, then you simply take it down like that. Now, for the extra security, I'll just put on some glue here to make sure that, oh gosh, the whole center will remain there. So prevent it from moving. Push it down extra because it's a little bit too hot to handle with the fingers. Now there always comes some glue through those holes, no big deal. And then we are almost there. Now comes the small part of these. I think it is useful that you glue the whole length like that and then glue this together again. And this piece, you're going to glue that upon the back side. Not too much glue, just a tiny little bit. Push it down. then you're going to pinch this whole thing so just like that roll it roll up around let's do a little check on the front side is this okay or not yeah i think it is then hold it grab your glue gun use a lot of glue and Press it down the center part, hold until the glue has been cooled down, and then you have a bow. Now, of course, you still gotta cut here and there. Well, the glue here didn't work out so well. I need some more. <laughs> On the edges, something came loose. Okay, let's glue the whole thing up. No big deal. Here are some loose ends that need to be trimmed. Now you can start folding a little bit. And then you have a super cute bow. I'm going to apply that upon the DIY and I think then we're there. Okay, who's ready for the final reveal of today? Here we are. The welcome home sign. Easy to make. A lot of green, a lot so much in the farmhouse style. And you can give the letters any color that you like. Let us know what you think about this. We're curious for your opinion. Well, that was it for today. Jenny and I hope you had fun watching. If you did, don't forget to let us know in the comment section what was your favorite DIY for today. Thank you again for your time and we wish you a nice day. Bye everyone!